Welcome to the Quiero.com Spanish Property Podcast, where we interview people who recently purchased a home in Spain. They tell us what worked, what didn't, and what they'd do differently next time. I'm Beth Davison, and today I'm speaking with Martin, originally from Verwood in Dorset, who along with his wife Sharon, purchased a villa in Montreuil, Valencia. This is their second property abroad, but this time around Martin and Sharon were keen to have more land due to both their love of gardening and to have space for their pets. Just wait until you hear all the differences in planning when it comes to a permanent relocation. Martin and Sharon worked with estate agent Azahar Properties to find their dream home in Spain. Check out the show notes at quiero.com forward slash podcast to find links and resources mentioned in this episode. My name is Martin and my myself and my partner Sharon, who were retired and originally from Dorset, bought a property in um, Monteroy, which is about 25 kilometres from Valencia City. It's a, a three-bedroom bungalow with a 2,000 square metre plot. Lovely. So how did the whole process start for you? Well, we've owned a property, well, we owned a property in uh, Turkey for seven and a half years. And uh, at the beginning of last year, we decided it was time to, to move out of Turkey. And we like sunshine. And uh, Montreuil, this area, has 300 days of sunshine. So that ticked the box. And um, we wanted something similar to what we had in Turkey, a uh, bungalow-type villa with a, with a pool, etc. But we wanted a bit more land. And... Um, so we just started to look on, on obviously on the website, um, and we came across uh, Azahar Pro- Properties, who are based in Montreuil, and they had quite a few properties that needed some uh, love and attention, which is what we were looking for really, something that we could put our mark on, and uh, we contacted, uh, say, Azahar Properties, a guy called Simon Creed, and met up with him. It's great that that didn't scare you then. The idea of a bigger project was kind of exactly what you wanted. You wanted to get more stuck in this time round. Yeah, the problem was the house in Turkey, <clears throat> excuse me, was a new build. It was brand new and it was very, um, it was lovely. Uh, it was very, very clinical. And after, after a fashion, you haven't really got much you can do to it. And um, yeah, we were after a bit more land as well because we've got uh, pets and we just wanted a bit more garden. And we can say it's just something we felt we'd like to do, um, mod- modernise a, 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 and put our own mark on it rather than having a, a very clinical finish like it was with a new new build. Absolutely. And so for this, this for you was a permanent kind of relocation if you were going to take the pets over there or was this kind of a holiday? No, this is a this permanent relocation. We, we lived in Turkey for seven years. Oh, fantastic. So that was permanent as well. Wow, exciting. So why Spain then? Was it always Spain from Turkey or did you look around at other European countries? Well, Spain originally was the country we wanted to go to before Turkey. Um, but at the time, the timings were all regarding um, <clears throat> you know, house prices, etc., and affordability uh, for what we were looking at. And in Turkey, the pro- cost of uh, property was very, very cheap. Um, so we decided we'd go there. And standard of living is, is, is very good. And then when we decided to say seven and a half years later that it was time to, to go, we... Uh, went back to our original plan. And as it happened, because of the Spanish property market slump, it um, put us in a position where we could afford to buy in Spain, where we couldn't before. Fantastic. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So you had already done the relocation seven and a half years previously. So all of that kind of initial leaving Britain stuff wasn't really relevant for you at this point. How was the second move different? Uh, it was rushed. <laughs> 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 unfortunately, uh, it, well, unfortunately, unfortunately, because it it, it forced us to uh, get 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 a move on. Really, um, what happened? We sold the property in in Turkey, although we were sort of ready for it and we had all the pet passports and stuff it, uh, set up. It was a bit of a shock when the, the sort of second person to look at the house bought it, um, and we negotiated uh, that when he bought it that we could stay there for two months. So we basically had sort of eight nine weeks to find an, another property which was a bit uh, scary. Yeah, totally. So what were you looking at? How many viewings did you go on? How kind of speedy was this process? It was very speedy. Uh, we, we, we originally contacted, I think it was three different um, agents, um, and, they, and it was in the region of nine, between nine and ten uh, properties that we sort of earmarked uh, to see. And um, we came over and we saw the first people. And you know, it was what we were looking for, just not quite right. Uh, and then the second person, we 
yeah, we met was uh, Simon Creed from Azahar Properties, and he 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 showed us four four or five properties that we we, we saw him marked, and um, yeah, he, he he was very good, and he he. he told us about the sort of goods and the bad sides of the, the properties, what would need, need to be done to them, etc. So he, he didn't sort of keep us in the dark. We were, so he, he sort of said that there could be, a, this would need doing, that would need doing, etc. So, yeah, it was very good. And presumably that amount of transparency was really important for you. Yes, yes. And, and since I've obviously got to know him, he's a, a very trustworthy person. Um, but as you are probably aware that, when you go into any sort of purchase, house purchase, especially in a foreign country, you, 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 it's very, um, you have to be very careful, or try to be. Yeah, he made us feel very relaxed, and he's, he's, a, he's a very nice guy. And uh, so he answered all our questions. Um, and then what happened, we shortlisted after the first day, two days of looking, we shortlisted. And we went back for a second viewing on a house that Simon had on his website. And uh, yeah. We decided that it was the right one. It was see, it's uh, a, a bungalow. Um, it's got two thousand square meters of land. Plenty of it's all fenced in, so the, the uh, our cats are happy. Um, and uh, yes, it, we've been here say since well, November the the ninth. We moved in. Fantastic. I mean, it's still really new. Then it's all you're all still kind of settling in. Yeah, it's amazing what we've got got through as well. To, to you know, in, in that short space of time, uh, we now we've now got a residency, a residencia. Uh, obviously, Simon helps us with um, get, get, getting our padron. He took us to the council to get our padron, so we're now on the council register. Yeah, he's introduced us to to local tradesmen, so we've had our electricity upgraded. So we've had double glazing put in, and he's helped us all the way along. You know, at the end of the day, in this area of Spain, uh, the, uh, the pe- local don't, people don't really speak a lot of English, so he's been very, very helpful from that. I've got very pigeon Spanish. But Simon's to help me out no, no end on that, that as well. So yeah, I'm sure that will improve over time as well if you're in an area where you're being forced to use it a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I, my, my intention is to uh, to learn to speak Spanish. So I, I, before I was... The year we decided, like, at the beginning of last year, I decided that we were coming. Um, I started to sort of, you know, learn the basics. So at least I can say hello and goodbye. And <laughs> with those things like the residency and all of that, they're just things I don't think about. But actually, there must be a long list if you want to be a permanent resident in Spain of things that you have to go through. Where did you find the initial information for that? Was it all Simon? Some, some of it was Simon. Uh, a lot of it we got from uh, Citizens of Ice Bureau Spain um, and, and off the internet as well. But uh, there's, there's, a, there's an awful lot of uh, information available on the internet. It's just about, about finding the correct information. So, let's say, CA, CAB in Spain are very good. And I just wanted to ask a little bit about the area, um, because you've said that it's very Spanish, no tourists or minimal tourism. Was that the aim for you originally? Yeah, sort of 25k from the seaside, so it's not it's not a holiday place. There's, there's quite a few expats here, um, but we, don't, we haven't sort of got involved with any of them yet. It's been probably too soon, um, we've been, been too busy. But no, I, I, we wanted the uh, Spanish feel and it, like you said earlier it will, it will force us to try and you know integrate and speak the language so that's that's something we wanted but we love the countryside and we love the sunshine and um, the, pl- the place is spot on it's it's the areas in um, say Montreuil and it's got three villages Real, Montreuil and Montserrat so there is quite a nice spread and we're about three kilometres away from the nearest nearest town so lovely and with all that additional land, what kind of stuff have you done with it at the moment? Well, we've uh, cut the trees down because they were very, uh, very, very tall. Um, so they, they've come down to a decent height. And uh, we just uh, sown the seeds for grass, which is now coming, starting to come up, which is uh, quite satisfying. Yeah, lovely. Because quite a, lot, quite, quite a lot of the front garden is going, is going to be grass. And um, then we're going to grow our own veg hopefully next year once we've uh, sort of uh, renovated the house a little bit. Yeah, perfect. I was going to say, are you a keen gardener? You sound green-fingered. Well, yes and no. <laughs> I am. It's on a list of things that need to be done. You have to prioritise, and uh, we just thought we'd get the, the main garden grass at the front and the driveway done. And um, then I can proceed with you know painting the house and stuff like this. Because it, it wasn't in disrepair, the house. It hit the guy who owned it had looked after it. It's just it needs to be brought into the 21st century. That's, that's basically it. Right. Fantastic. And do you get lots of people visiting? 
Have you got friends and family who come over? Not yet, not yet. Um, we will do. And once uh, once it gets into sort of May time, we've got my, my parents and my, my children will come over. So, yeah, the people will come and visit us, yeah. So Waiting we need, for the we need sunshine. To, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to make sure it's OK for them when they come over. So. Yeah, totally. So of the whole process, which parts did you find the most challenging? Uh, I, don't, I don't want to be disrespectful to the Spanish, but they love the siesta here. Yes, they do. <laughs> and and uh, that's quite uh, frustrating when you have, you want to make appointments, you've got, you've got a, t- a limited amount of time to do things. And then they say, well, we'll come back at five o'clock because um, we're yeah, going to Yeah, because it's long, isn't it? They're breaking the middle of the mm. day. Yeah, two till five. And uh, it's it, it can, that's very frustrating. And now this is a difference between dealing with Azahar because Simon's uh, British. He doesn't do siestas. So I said to him, you know, would you be okay to sing at two o'clock? And he says, yeah, no problem. And I sort of explained to him, he said, oh, no, we don't do siestas. We, we, we'll get on and we'll, we'll show you what you want to see. So <laughs> that's another, another side to it. <laughs> that's yeah. Another bonus to it sort of thing. Because we were, we, we were, we say we had eight weeks, nine weeks to get this sorted out. Yeah, so if you take out a chunk in the middle of every day, I'm sure that can be really yeah. stressful. Yeah. But I mean, it's a way, their way of life and you have to accept that. And now we're here, you, you do accept it. If you want to buy something, you've got to make sure you're out. You just go to a shop. You've got to make sure you're out in the morning to get what you need yeah. or come back, come, come back later. But it's a very relaxed way of life, and I like that. It's nice. Totally. And what advice would you give to friends or family who, if they were saying, yeah, we're thinking about buying in Spain, what would be your advice to them? Um, try and make sure you, you pick the right area because this, is, this, this area is not everybody's cup of tea. So you need to make sure you've got the right area. And if you're not prepared to integrate, if you're looking for a more like holy home, then you know you need to find exactly the right area. That's what I'd say. Sort of, don't just jump into it. We had, we had an idea of where we wanted to be um, because we, it took us about eight nine months of looking on the internet at diff- many well, hundreds and probably thousands of properties. So yeah, investigation is is the, is the key. And make sure you're, it's the right area. And for you, the agent sounds really important. Yes, the agent, um, it was, yeah, because although each Spanish agent we used, they spoke English and uh, they helped us, um, but he just came across and, uh, exactly what we wanted. And the other bonus as well with Azahar Properties is a purchaser doesn't pay commission. So we saved ourselves some money there as well, which, is, which is, at the time was very helpful. Yeah, fantastic. Um, lastly then, what is your favourite bit about Spanish culture? We've talked about siestas. <laughs> which yeah, bits yeah. do you like the best? Well, I mean, I love, we love the food, uh, paella and uh, all the Spanish food. We're in, we love seafood, so prawns and mussels. And, and we love the sunshine and we love the re- relaxed way of life here. And it, say because of the siesta, you, you have a re- relaxed way of life. And as long as you accept that, you know, and don't want to be rushing around expecting the Spanish to do the same, then it, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, Sounds yeah. lovely we, to me. It's been snowing yeah. here this week, so I'm very jealous. <laughs> My, I have seen that my uh, children uh, where they live in, in uh, England uh, it's full of snow so not, that, I don't miss the, the weather at all yeah fantastic you know what that's all of my questions thank you so much for chatting to me today that's perfect ok that's great nice to speak to you thank you for listening and thanks to Martin for sharing his experiences along with Azahar Properties for their help to make this episode possible I particularly like the sound of all of that land and how sweet that they prioritised their pets' needs during the property hunt. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. This podcast is produced by Quiero.com and our mission is to connect you with estate agents and properties throughout Spain. Whether your dream home is a rustic farmhouse surrounded by olive groves or a lock-up-and-leave apartment on the seafront, you'll find everything you need at Quiero.com. If you've enjoyed this episode, we'd really appreciate your five-star rating on iTunes. It helps us reach and connect more people with their dream home in Spain. And whenever you're ready, here are four ways we can help you. Ask a question by emailing beth at chiero.com. We'll try and answer them all in an upcoming Q&A episode. Get a location guide also by emailing beth at chiero.com. We'll reply with the latest data and information on the areas you're interested in. Calculate your budget. Simply visit chiero.com forward slash budget, enter two numbers, and you're done. Be our guest. If you've already purchased your home in Spain, we would love you to share your story on the podcast. 
Just email beth at chiaro.com and we'll take it from there. Tune in next week when I'm speaking with Cal, originally from Tempoli. He purchased an apartment in Fuengirola, Malaga, and having bought off plan, is slap bang in the middle of the building process as we speak. I'm Beth Davison, and you've been listening to the Quiero.com Spanish Property Podcast. I'll see you next week.